Welcome to the December edition of Healthy Living Resources. I'm Amanda Woods, and I'm here today with Beth Stafura, who will be giving us the best financial advice she's ever received. Stay tuned. Welcome to the December edition of Healthy Living Resources. Uh, my name is Amanda Woods. I'm the Healthy Finances Program Specialist for OSU Extension, and today we're joined by Beth Stavira, um, from an edu Extension Educator from Mahoney County. Welcome, Beth. Thank you, Amanda. So before we jump into today's topic, do you want to maybe give our viewers just a little bit of insight into what you do here in the county? Sure. Um, so I teach a lot of financial education courses. Currently, we have the First Time Home Buyers class, which is a great opportunity for first time home buyers. I also do a foreclosure prevention program. You know, people just need to be aware of foreclosures, how to prevent them, and what you should do if you find yourself faced one of those. We also offer some financial fitness courses, you know, how to get yourself back on task with your money, um, um, smart money. So we have a a variety of different financial courses that we offer. That's awesome. So if anybody has been watching the show, you'll know, they'll know that finances is my um, passion, my focus. Um, and so today, um, so a couple of months ago, we discussed the fact that financial, financial struggle can be a really big source of stress in our lives. Um, and so that's why I'm really happy about the topic that you brought with you today. You're bringing with you the best financial advice you've ever received. Um, so tell us a little bit about why that's a topic that you feel so strongly about. Well, I think, um, I mean, as we were talking earlier, in our younger days, um, we weren't so savvy about our money. And as you indicated, um, finances can be very stressful. Mm -hmm. And we all love money, right? Um, oh, yeah. We need money. Um, and we want to make sure that our money is working well for us. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that, you know, we think back about, you know, tips and advice that we've received over, you know, the course of our lives or, you know, recently or read something or something somebody shared with us and how that had an impact on making our finances work better for us. Absolutely. It's funny, before um, before we started, we were chatting and um, I shared a little bit about the best financial advice I ever received was from my sister who said after a, a month that I might have been a little strapped to uh, take a look back at my previous month's finances and see where that money went and that sticker shock was real. So that was probably one of the bigger financial impacts in my adult life was just realizing where that money was going. Um, so that's great. So let's jump into the first piece of financial advice that you're going to share with us today. Well, <clears throat> when we started talking about doing this presentation, I started to think about all the things I, I had received. And I remember um, being told at a younger age, it's not how much you make, but it's how much you spend. So how many times do we hear somebody say, oh, I wish I made a million dollars, right? Because what are we going to do? We're going to spend probably most of that million dollars. Mm -hmm. And in reality, we're not you know, going to have that type of um, income um, on a yearly basis. So, you know, it's important to, you know, take a look at your your income mm -hmm. and figure out how you can save your money to work for you. Uh, I think about uh, often people spend more than they make. Right. Absolutely. So then they, they, you know, if something happens, they don't have the money to um, get something repaired right. or a home maintenance project that they need to take care of. So then that's when, you know, stress occurs. Right. So it, it's so imperative that as you go through your life, that you, you know, try to save 20%, pay yourself first. Mm -hmm. um, recently, um, I found this really interesting. My um, a friend of mine, her daughter, her, her car um, was having issues. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she had taken it in and they said, oh my gosh, you need a new motor. And so, she, you know, she thought about it and she's like, you know, I don't drive a lot. My car doesn't have a lot of miles on it, but I don't want to go into buying a new car. Right. So she decided to go ahead and get that car repaired. And so she took the money out of her emergency fund or savings and paid for the motor. And what struck me is when her mom was sharing with me that, you know, her friends said, I would have never had the money to pay for that motor. So it's just an example of, you know, make sure you keep 
<clears throat> um, he, mm-hmm. you know, saving. Absolutely. And I think those are the things that tend to derail us. And I oftentimes feel like that's a slippery slope when you're not able to, when you're not, when you're spending above your means, as you mentioned, so you're not, you're paying closer attention to what you're making and maybe paying less attention to what you're spending. Um, when you don't have the money, you end up having to put it on a credit card and that can just create such a, a bigger mess for us to deal with. Um, yeah, definitely. And having that emergency backup, like um, there's a study that said that about half of Americans would not have at least, I think it's 400 to $500 in an emergency savings um, if they needed to pay to fix a car or some kind of emergency um, expense. So she's definitely probably among that, the 50% that would, um, which is great, which, you know, stopped her from going into debt or, you know, going further off, off track there. Great piece of advice. Um, so we can move into your next piece of financial advice. <clears throat> well, it kind of leads us into something we've already talked about is don't overspend right. um, and live within your means. Yes. So, you know, you take a look at your salary, you know, break it down into a month, it, you know, and I remember being told at a young age, when you look at four weeks in a month, like maybe the first week should be what your mortgage payment or your housing allowance should be. Mm-hmm. The second week should be your car expenses. Third week should be other expenses that you have, you know, utilities, insurance, um, household bills. And then that last week should all be your savings. And that should be into your savings, into your retirement. So, you know, to try to maintain that budget. Because often I hear in my classes, clients saying, you know, I just don't have any money to save. Mm -hmm. And we take a look at what they're doing and and they're overspending. They're living above that budget. So, you know, take a look at that because... As you find, if you get a raise, you tend to, you know, gravitate to, right. well, I can afford this now. I'm going to spend more because I make more. Right. Yeah. So, you know, especially it's the end of the year, we're going to look at, you know, receiving um, our taxes. Mm-hmm. So, you know, take a look and start thinking about, gee, maybe I should, you know, save half of that refund or you know pay down a bill or something Mm -hmm. along those lines absolutely when i tend to think of living above one's means the first thing i think of is typically a credit card right um and so people use credit cards and they can be um really helpful in an emergency they can also be helpful to build credit if what you're putting on a credit card you can then pay off at the end of the month um but i think that a credit card is a tool that can make it really a little bit too easy to live beyond your means because not only are you spending what's in your bank account, you're swiping that debit card, um, but when something falls outside of those bounds, you're then swiping that credit card. And if you're in, uh, you know, living outside of what you have to spend, that debt's just gonna build and it's gonna snowball. And then you know, after a year, you're gonna owe a couple thousand dollars in credit card. Easily. Yeah, so I think that's like, for me, the biggest, the biggest thing is really live within your means what you have to spend each month and not not any beyond that right and I, and I think too people tend to maybe get a house mm-hmm. or an apartment that it's really above their right. means I mean you could yep. scale back you know and not have to have a you know I don't know three right. car garage or yeah. you know just scale back some of those amenities that you may we all would want but right it's really wonderful to have that money in savings yes so and the same thing with a car you know it's fun to go look at cars and you know today cars are just full of technology oh, yeah it's you know it's really exciting but when right. you start looking about paying for that you know, right you might want to scale back on that as well right so. you don't need all the bells and whistles and i think a lot of times especially this time of year all these flashy new technologies are coming about um there are the new scooters. I don't know if you've seen them, the new scooters that people can rent and ride around the city. Um, I know somebody who saw those scooters and they're like, I have to have one. I have to own an electric scooter. And I'm like, ride it out. It's probably not $500 that you need to spend right now. It's probably not money that you have. Um, so really just kind of trying to, to keep those wants at bay, really just buy what you can afford. And great, if you can afford the electric scooter, by all means, scoot all around town. But um, really just kind of try to keep those expenses in check. It's Probably oh, that. sure. All right, great. So what is the next piece of financial advice? Well, this is an interesting one. Um, if you're planning to be married or um, starting marriage, learn to live on one income. And I think that's something we all can benefit from because yeah. two can live as cheaply as one. So now you have two incomes, right? And why not save that one income, you know, and, and right. learn to live within those means. 
this so when i was reading through your notes this was the one that i that i found the most interesting because i honestly had never heard or considered that um but when you think about it you were living on just your paycheck prior to marriage that one income prior to marriage um and so i think maybe when you bring them both together there's that like oh now we have so much more let's spend more let's buy that big house let's buy that big car but really it's pretty likely that you can both live on just that one income i mean i can't imagine having that extra income to stash away into savings or retirement every month. I mean, that's such a good opportunity. It really is. And and when you start to think about it, I know it's, you know, think life is expensive, right? But if you sit down together and we find the most successful people really talk about their money, mm-hmm. like share their expenses, where is their money going? Right. Get rid of that debt, pay out that debt. So, right. you know, having that cushion that money in your savings account or or in your retirement or you know 401k or um, your emergency fund that just reduces your stress and makes things so much easier absolutely and it can also i think create a more beneficial year for you as a couple too because if you're saving that money maybe throw a little in a fund savings account or a travel savings account absolutely and then you can take those vacations and do all that stuff because you're stashing away that money and you didn't just increase your spending each month yeah, I think that's a great, uh, great point. You also touched on something else that I, that I think is important um, to just track, you know, off track a little bit. But you mentioned that it's important to talk to a person in your life about finances. I think we so often hear that finance is a topic that we shouldn't discuss, especially in a marriage with a partner. Having those discussions, those real talks about money, expectations um, can be super important. Not talking about them, assuming that those little difficulties will go away or maybe a little overspending here and there will kind of come out in the wash. It's probably not the way to go, right? Absolutely. Uh, and we know, as we, you've indicated earlier, that you know money is a big stressor. And right. if you hold secrets back from your partner or you're not open about your money, then that's when you find things are you know starting to fall apart. So you know it's just a novel idea, but something you should plan to do on a month on a monthly basis. Sit down, mm-hmm. look at your spending plan, figure out how you're doing, right. you know, where's your money going, you know, and absolutely, you know, tuck away like a little slush fund for mm-hmm. a trip or the fun stuff. The fun stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. Because you work hard, you want to enjoy. Right. And then not feel like you're strapped for cash at the end of every month. I think that's a great point. I mean, we should all sit down at the end of our month and <clears throat> reevaluate where our money went that month. Maybe I spent a little too much on, I mean, this time of year especially, it can be oh, I know. really hard at the end of the month to look back and say, okay, should I go out too many times? Everybody wants to go out. Holiday parties are happening. Um, should I spend too much out on food? So as a couple especially, there's two separate people out spending the entire month. The bringing it back together at the end of the month and really just taking that time to assess is, is huge. Um, but then also having that emergency savings to fall back on that you've been stashing away each month can, can stop a little more stress in our relationships, right? When something right. breaks, car breaks down, washer dryer breaks down, there's not this, you know, stress of how am I going to pay for it? Which credit card do we put it on? Because you've, you've created this level of comfort for yourselves that now you have that money for these purposes to be able to use. It's so true, Amanda. So, you know, just have really open dialogue Mm -hmm. and, you know, just make your money work for you like it's supposed to. Um, It's interesting. I was talking to somebody at work, actually, and they were sharing to me they had just paid off their house. And, you know, they were saying, you know, I... I, I was diligent about paying it, but then now it's freed up on so much more of my income. Right. You know, and she's like, you know, when we go out to eat, we only drink water. And I figured I've spent, you know, saved thousands over my right time of my life because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm I'm not buying, you know, I don't know, soda or soda or, drink or, or iced yeah. teas, things like that. Mm-hmm. And she goes, that little extra money she didn't tuck away towards that mortgage. So, yeah, you know, and I thought, you know, those are little tips that really make a difference. It really does. And I think that that's the, like, that's a really great takeaway from, from your point, too, is that if you're needing to cut back, okay, you can still go out every now and then, but, like, drink water. That can sometimes be half of your tab, half 
of your bill was that iced tea or that you know soda. Um, so those are kind of great ways. But she made it work and stashed it away. She and did. Now what's she going to do with that extra income? Stash it in their <laughs> retirement savings? She or? is. Okay. She's putting it in her retirement. So she's like, I feel like I could retire maybe five years earlier. That's outstanding. So yeah. and we're living longer now. So you know, you want to make that money extend. Right. Retirement's definitely something for us to start thinking about earlier and earlier. And it is. Yeah. All right. What is our next piece of financial advice? Our next advice is um, instead of doing a monthly budget, create a spending plan. Mm -hmm. Because when we talk about budgets, you know, those can be really comprehensive and, you know, you're tracking everything. Um, <clears throat> and then sometimes people get lost in their budgets, not sure where to put them. Right. But when you look at a spending plan, that's more proactive. Like, okay, I know. <coughs> Pardon me. Mm -hmm. And my fixed expenses. Right. Which would be what? Your mortgage. Right. Car. Mm -hmm. Household expenses. Things that you know you're going to have to spend every month. Correct. Right. Um, <clears throat> and then you can subtract that from your income and then you have this discretionary fund left. Right. Which then you can determine, okay, um, <clears throat> how do I want to make this money work for me? So we find that creating the spending plan, people are more... Um, it often will tend to, you know, be more proactive about, okay, I need to look at my spending plan. Right. It's easier concept than that budget. It's a little more user friendly for sure. That's I mean, way to put it. Yeah. They're the budget to me, it's obviously an important tool, but it can be a little bit um, challenging to look at things in that format. But I love the idea of a spending plan. I think that's how um, I tend to I know what I'm spending each month on those, you know, my my bills, my rent, all of those things and then then you've got that money left over to, do, to figure out, you know, how you're going to spend that, what you're going to do. Yeah, it is. Because a lot of us, you know, we, we like now it's the holiday season, right? right? And oh did we gosh. plan for those little extra gifts? Yep. And, you know, are we creating our spending plan to allow us to, you know, pay cash as opposed to getting out those credit cards right because you don't want to have to be paying interest on those yeah. come january no you don't want to be paying off christmas yeah that's one of the biggest pieces of advice i think to give around the holidays is you know don't go into debt for the holidays right no. don't be paying off the christmas present in january um, but the spending, the spending plan, I think that's a great point. I, um, as we were discussing earlier, I'm heading out of town for a Christmas visit with some family. Um, and it's birthday and Christmas gifts for the nephews. And so it's going to seem like I've got a little out of control. So I gave them the warning. Hey, heads up. Um, and she made a comment about it being tough on the bank account to have two nephews with birthdays and Christmas around this time of year. Um, but I was able to respond that I had planned ahead. I had that little extra money. And so maybe for the past couple months, I didn't, um, you know, spend it on going out to eat. Maybe I stashed a little extra away. And so I have the money to be able to do that. So that's a really important, um, if I hadn't been keeping track, um, I probably still would have spent the money, but then I would have probably ended up having a credit card and nobody wants to start the new year with credit card debt. You know, <clears throat> so congratulations. That's what you, you, yes, yeah. you know, it, and you feel good about yourself that mm -hmm. you've done this. You know, that right. you've gone ahead, planned ahead, figured out, you know, what your expense is going to be. Yep. And something else I think I see a lot more of is giving a gift of time. Yes. You know, um, meet somebody. Um, yep. Go or walk around and look at Christmas lights. Do, Absolutely. Yeah. Go to the park. Mm -hmm. um, there's just so many fun things you can do that are just a gift of time. Yeah. It doesn't really cost actually money. It's true. And I think that that, again, falls back into one of your earlier um, pieces of advice, which was living within your means. So if, you, if you're if you running a little short on funds the holiday season, um, and I think that it's really great to remember that it's just more than gifts too, right? I mean, it's food, it's travel, everything adds up and eats away at that money. And to make the holidays less stressful, less financially straining, um, look at your finances and see what you can afford. So if maybe gifts are, are going to put you too big of a strain on you and possibly even into the new year, then exactly like you said, time spent together, I think is the best anyways, making memories, going for walks this time of year, looking at Christmas lights, going to you know the park. That's a, a great way to give them that gift, but not not swipe that card and put it right and i've heard people get together just book 
cook, you know. Which I think is great. Yeah. It is. Bring some food, you know, get together, mm-hmm. try new recipes. Yeah. You know, and it's fun. Those are things that you'll remember. Even the holiday baking, I think, is a really fun, could be a really fun and inexpensive get together, right? So I know a lot of people with traditions you get together and do, um, they'll bake holiday cookies. And obviously that can also add up. But if you're getting, you know, a group of people together to do that and that's your gift to each other, everybody leaves with cookies and then you won't have to then go out and buy right. it. And then you can give the cookies as a gift, right? Right. Yeah, so definitely kind of keeping in mind uh, your finances and kind of, you know, keeping track of that ahead of time. I mean, I think as early as the summer, which sounds crazy, it sounds a little bit, you know, a little over dramatic, I think, but starting to save for the holidays or plan for the holidays in the summer will really um, allow you to kind of have that experience that you want. Sure. I mean, there's still credit unions and banks that offer the Christmas clubs, you know, yeah, where you can put away every month, mm-hmm. you know, or they automatically can deduct it out of your, your, your checking accounts. Yeah. So that check rolls in in November and, you know, you, that's kind of like your spending plan. For you got the it there. For the, that's a great idea. All right. So more advice for us? Sure. Um, <clears throat> when you go to get your mortgage, it's always a novel idea to make one extra payment a year. Mm-hmm. And if you don't really have the funds, you know, to, you know, put down 800, you know, 500, a thousand dollars, you know, every month, just add a little extra to that mortgage payment because mm-hmm. that goes right to the principal and that will actually cut years off your mortgage and save you thousands of dollars. That's great advice. And I feel like we could also maybe apply it to if you're paying down credit card debt if you're sure. paying down student loans i mean oh, so many people one. i mean we have this enormous amount of money that people have taken out on student loans and you know it can feel like you're going to be paying it off forever right it feels like one of those expenses that's just never going to go away but like that like your mortgage if you can put that extra you know pay it one extra payment a year um that would be a great way to kind of try to, to feel like you're getting ahead of it it is, and, and you know, people, you know, when you're signing your mortgage, you you, you feel like, well, yes, I'm. For example, I'm borrowing a hundred thousand dollars. Right. But then you don't think about all those years of interest that you're paying. Right. It's going to end up maybe being three hundred thousand dollars. So, <clears throat> when you look at that, it'd be like, wow, it's great to have saved maybe a hundred thousand dollars in interest. Right. Yeah. So, and even on those credit card expenses, you know, some of those rates are higher. Yeah. And, you know, makes a big impact on your budget. Makes it so much harder to pay off with a lot. Of that. And really, one extra payment in a year, um, it's not that much. I mean, you know, that's cutting out your Starbucks for a couple months in a row, maybe the whole, like, what, one drink a, a year, and then you've got that extra mortgage payment, I'm sure, or more. Absolutely. Or, mm-hmm. you know, I know avocado toast is a big thing. <laughs> I yeah. love it. It's avocado right. toast. Yeah. So, you know, just, you know, mm-hmm. give that up for a week. Right. Um, making those and just thinking I think about the future I think um, it can get really easy to just focus on where we are currently with our finances and to get a little too comfortable um, I know for myself with those student loan payments like I'm gonna have to make it this month and next month and for the next several years so why why put the extra time on you to it but that's not the right outlook you want to do right. everything you can um, because the longer you're paying them like you said the more money that you're going to have to do so um, really kind of cut and, and kind of scrimp and save and, and try to figure out how to make as many payments as possible moving forward. that's so true and uh, another tip i i find very interesting um and i've decided i've not really done this one personally but mm-hmm. this year coming up i am going to try it it would be one week a month is a no spending week that's interesting and explain a little bit more about how you think that would work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it scares me to hear that. I, I know. Like, okay. But I read a lot about it um, and the tip was shared with me by a, a friend who is actually a financial advisor mm-hmm. and he was indicating to me, so for example, you have four weeks in a month, yep. so you need to purchase your your food, your groceries within those three weeks. Okay. So that no spending week, you, you're not going Lots to the grocery store. Pantry living. Pantry living. Living, okay. freezer living, um, and gas for your car. Right, you got to you got to plan it. So okay. you know you put the gas in the car. 
right? <clears throat> There's no driving through, you know, the coffee place to look mm-hmm. up that coffee, right? You no gotta, impulse purchases. No impulse purchases. No, like, oh, I got a, a, t- a text on my phone, right? Yeah. A notification. I can't miss this sale, right? right? I've been waiting. It was get you, too. I'm like, you're right. I do need 25% off Christmas ornaments right now. I do. 40% <laughs> off. Are you kidding? Yeah, I, I've got to go, right? Yeah. So, and it's a nice opportunity just to, you know, catch up on greedy right. and, you know, doing those things that you've neglected. So mm-hmm. there's no spending at all during this week. I would have to feel like a couple of months of doing that, a couple of months of having that one week where you, because it, it does initially sound like that's a lot, like going seven days without spending money, like how can you do that? Um, but I have a feeling that once you do that, you see how much you don't probably need to be going out and making up. You're going to survive and live just as fine as you would otherwise, not swiping that card several times throughout the week, not driving through and grabbing the last, last minute coffee or those last minute shopping purchases. And I have a feeling eventually you're spending throughout the rest of the month after a couple months of that um, could see a positive impact because of that non well, Absolutely. Just think if you save $50 right. for that one week, that's what, $600 a year. Yeah. Or what if you saved $100, you know? That's you have to imagine. But yeah, it'd be probably close closer to that and then you're gonna go into the rest of the month the rest of the weeks the next week you know you're probably not like I gotta go back out there and spend all that money I didn't spend you're you know probably keeping those those attitudes towards money for the rest of the month you do so I find this to be very interesting so I'm gonna gonna start it okay January January so let me know if you decide to try it we um yeah I think that would be interesting and we can maybe circle back we can back around on next month's episode or the month after that probably and give a little update on um Beth's no spending week which I'd be interested in I'll also do it so we can talk about how painless it was I'm sure (laughs) I'm being dramatic I I definitely am guilty of the occasional um coffee drive by which I know is definitely I've heard of spending leaks that's always the biggest one mentioned um and I it's funny too to think of all of the ways you're spending money but not really thinking about it um and one of the biggest ones for me is when you're um streaming when you're using those streaming services and you're like i want to watch this movie i'll just rent it i'll just rent this i'll just rent it because it's so easy and it's on your tv and it's there for you and it adds up <laughs> well, it does and you're, like, oh, and yeah. you're not thinking that way mm-hmm. but you know yeah. 3.99 4.99 mm-hmm. you know it's yeah. convenient but on that week you'll just watch the movies that you have and not even have to worry about it i think a lot of these are all really great tips and uh, I think that um, it goes back to that stress. And I think that all of these tips will help improve stress. It feels like you're winning. It feels like you have control over your finances and that's what you want because that helps you then move forward and make the right decisions for financial security. It does. And we all want to make our money work for us. Right. Right. We want to live a good life. We want to, you know, to have... Yeah. Um, you want to feel comfortable. You want to feel like you, you know, are doing everything that you can to, to live a life that you're able to support. You do. That's great. Well, um, thank you so much for being on this month episode. This is again a topic that I love, um, and I just think is is great, and um, we're really happy. So we will touch base with you again. Sounds great. In a few months to find out how the no spending week went. Um, so next uh, month's episode, January, will be in the new year. Um, we're going to have Melanie Hart with us, and she will also be discussing a financial topic, and she is our Ascension Educator from Green County. Uh, so thank you all for joining us for today's Healthy Living Resources, and I look forward to uh, seeing you next month.